Hey, it's Lance from Langchain. So Fireworks is a popular inference engine that many users of Langchain have used. It uh, hosts many open source models. And they're releasing a new model today that I'm really excited about. Um, that is called Fire Function V2. And the main point of this is it is a model that's very good at tool calling or function calling. Um, it's reported to be competitive with GPT-40 in terms of function calling, but faster and less expensive. So that you know has a lot of appeal. Um, and today we're just going to show how it works, like how to use it, and, and we're going to go and test it on a small agent evaluation challenge that I've set up. So maybe first is at the stage, um, you know, what is tool use? Why is it interesting? Uh, I can zoom in a little bit here. So basically tool use expands models capabilities by connecting it to external tools. Um, it's used oftentimes or almost always with agents. Uh, so that is the ability to give an LLM access to different tools like web search or various APIs and have the LM basically return to you um, both the payload, so like what's actually necessary to pass to that API or function, as well as the name. So like what function to use and what the input is derived from a natural language input from the user. And so the general flow kind of looks like this. I have some function that I define, I bind it to my LLM, I input natural language. If the natural language is relevant to the function, the LM knows it's aware that this function exists and it converts that natural language request into what's actually needed to run that function, notably like the function argument as mentioned and the function name. So that's the big idea here. Um, now let's talk a little bit about what they did, which I think is actually pretty notable and interesting here. So they built on Llama 3 Instruct, which already is a very strong model, kind of been very obviously really widely used. Now they made an interesting point in their blog post that is, Prior efforts to basically fine tune for function calling focus on aggressive and narrow fine tuning. And this is a classic problem that we see basically overfitting to certain benchmarks or challenges. You know, you have a function calling benchmark, you overfit to it very strongly. You have a model that's very, very good at function calling, maybe in this narrow context, can do well on a benchmark, but it's not good at generalization to tasks, right? And so what they try to do with Fire Function V2, according to the blog post, is balance these two things fine tune it such that it is very strong at function calling, but retain the capabilities of the base model. Whereas prior efforts, very aggressive fine tuning often erases the native capabilities of the model. So again, this is really the aim here is to preserve kind of instruction following as well as function calling. So it's like balancing these two worlds and, and we'll go ahead and see how good it is. I think that the, you know, what they've mentioned is very exciting, but let's go ahead and test it out. So I have a fresh notebook here. Um, so basically all I have to do is this, uh, you know, just of course from chat with fireworks. Uh, and of course I just, just pip install this first, make sure you've got that done. So if you, you know, pip install this guy, you run that, you can import here. And here's your model name. It's just gonna be this accounts, fireworks models, fire function V2 RC, of course, set your API key. So these are all the kind of fundamentals and we'll share those that documentation in terms of just setting up your fireworks account. But here's where you, you set your model. So boom, we've done this and now I can go down here. Now let's define some tool. So in my case, my tool is just going to be, you know, let's call it like it's a, it's a weather tool I have, right? And here's what the input is. The input, I'm defining the schema here. The tool wants location and unit. So it wants like a city and it wants a unit in Celsius or Fahrenheit, right? So those are expected inputs for my tool or, or for my function. Um, and then I'm going to go, go ahead and find, define that as a function itself. So this is kind of a, you know, example of what that function could be. Of course, in the, re in the real world, this, this could be an API. This is something, you know, some external service. Um, so I define my function here. Now I just bind that to my LLM. There we go. And let's go ahead and call it with a query that's relevant to this. So basically all I have to ask is what's the weather like in San Francisco and Celsius. I make the call and let's see. Okay, cool. So you can see, we can basically get a tool call out of the LLM, which has the arguments formatted per my schema. So that's really cool. And the correct function name again, as mentioned here. So this is like a basic example of how the LLM does appear to take natural language, just like we show in our diagram here, natural language input and outputs the function name and the arguments needed to run that function. Okay, so that's really cool. This is just like showcasing general capability. Now let's actually show a real world example of this. So I actually put together uh, this cookbook pretty recently. It's in our Langsmith cookbooks section related to agent evaluation. And we actually have a accompanying video coming out today on this if you really want to go in depth in it. But what I'll just mention very briefly is this is the ability to evaluate agent performance. Um, and so this is actually a SQL database agent that we define in this cookbook. Um, I set up a few API keys for Langsmith, set my Langsmith key. And 
basically here's where I grab the database itself. Um, and so I've already done this, you would just run this, and this is how you test, make sure the database exists. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a SQL agent. So SQL agent basically will have an LLM that and we're using LangGraph to orchestrate this agent. So our LLM basically will receive a question, decide which tool to use. Um, the, we'll have basically an edge that will look at the tool, make a decision as to whether or not to return an answer or call a tool. If it's a tool from the LLM, we'll go ahead and invoke it, re return that back, and this will repeat kind of in, in a loop. So that's kind of the architecture of our agent. Don't worry too much about this. The main point here is you want to assess the capability of this uh, our, our new Fireworks LLM in this context. So here's where it gets interesting. What I can do is I'm just going to define that LLM we already talked about right here, that, this new Fireworks model, um, and I'm going to add some metadata for my experiment logging here. Um, and this is all in the notebook. You can solve this is where we define a number of tools that are relevant to SQL. Uh, you, again, you can look at the notebook to see this. What we really want to look at here is test the agent in a real world context. Does it do well or not? Um, here we can define our SQL agent. Um, here we're basically just defining our, our kind of full agent. And this is what the agent is going to look like. So again, we're going to start. It's going to go to the LLM. In this case, it'll be chat fireworks. Uh, it'll make a decision potentially to call a tool. The tool will be called. Tool call gets returned. And this will go back and forth until um, the agent basically returns a natural language response, no tool call, and then we end. So that's really it. Um, now here's what we can do. We can actually just evaluate the, the capability of this agent relative to some references. So again, this is kind of our agent flow. The agent's going to take a question, return an answer based upon querying SQL. Um, and we have a set of reference answers that I've actually already defined. So that's actually right here. I can build a data set of question answer pairs. Um, I'm going to name this SQL agent response. And basically, this is going to wrap my agent. And again, you can you can look at this notebook um, uh, we'll, we'll before share it. Um, this is setting my evaluators. This will grade my agent responses versus uh, the reference. So there we go. And we can go ahead and run this. So we're going to run this on Fireworks. And we're also going to run this on GPT-40. And we can kind of look at the differences. We're going to run three replicates of these experiments. Uh, so that kind of gives us some confidence in the scoring. And that'll go ahead and run now. So I've run this command on both GPT-40 and Fireworks. And I can go over to my data set in LionSmith and have a look. So here's my set of experiments against this data set that I've run. I can see if you go back to the notebook, basically, uh, if I can go all the way up, um, here's where I kind of set the experiment prefix. Those prefixes are logged right here. So I can see here's GPT-40, here's Fireworks. You can see that I ran three repetitions of each. So I've run three replicates of each one of these, and this is the aggregate score. So basically it's saying 60% of the questions I got correct in both cases in aggregate. I can click on each of these, I can run comparison, and what's neat is this is basically the comparison view. So you can see these are all of our questions. Uh, each question is a reference answer. So if I open this up, I can actually kind of see that. So basically, um, here's the reference input, here's the question, here is the output, Here's my two experiments. So this is Fireworks, this is GPT-40. I can see in this particular case, here is basically the mean score across those three replicates, and I can look at each one. So here's the actual uh, responses. Yeah, they're all correct. Um, oh, it went, yeah, I think I lost that. Um, I can open that back up. Um, so basically, I was looking at this first one, and yeah, we were looking at the replicates. So yeah, 14 and 14. So that's kind of the basic setup here. Um, I can really easily compare between agent performance using GPT-40 and Fireworks in this particular kind of test case. And what I can see is, if you look at this aggregate score, so in this case, they both get it correct. In this case, they both get it wrong. In this third case, it looks like a Fireworks got it wrong, but GPT-40 got it correct. So that's interesting. In this fifth case, it looks like they both got it correct. And in this, uh, sorry, in this fourth case, in this fifth case, it looks like GPT-40 got it wrong and Fireworks got it correct. So in any case, look, I agree, This is a, this, I, I get it, this is a small scale challenge, there's only five questions, but it gives you a sense that Fireworks function calling does seem to be pretty good, uh, at least in this small scale test, it looks like it's on par with GPT-40. Of course, you should run testing yourself in your application, but I think this presents a very nice option for building agents uh, in any or any use cases in which you want to actually use function calling or tool use. It looks pretty promising from what I can see and uh, definitely encourage you to play with it. Thanks.